Coming up, we'll talk about the changes in remote working, and I'll share with you the one thing you need to do before you launch. We'll take your calls and your chats. And it starts now. I'm coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do that, and how you can get there. It is all about you, because you were created to fill a unique role. In other words, you were created to contribute through your work. So we're talking about purpose here. We're not talking about a day job and just trying to make it to Friday afternoon and Drink my face off from all those obnoxious people and customers I have to deal with. No, 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 no. We're talking about rolling into the weekend exhilarated and exhausted from doing work that matters deeply to you because it creates a result that matters to you. You have the answers, I promise. It's my job to get them out of you. So 844-747-2577 is the number. There it is on the screen, 844-747-2577. I don't do this every day, but you know, today's a day where I just, I feel like there's somebody out there who's been watching the program. You want to call, but you're scared to death. You're nervous. Maybe you're dealing with some insecurity. I'm going to take good care of you. All right. You're not a prop on this show. Somebody for me to mistreat, to make a point. I'm here because of you. So call. 844-747-2577. Madison is standing by, the nicest person in talk radio. She'll get you prepped and ready to go. So let's go. All right, I saw this article, Twitter, Square, Google, Facebook, a lot of changes being announced about remote workers. In fact, Twitter and Square, who Jack Dorsey is the founder and chairman, uh, CEO of both companies, has said, We are making work from home permanent. So that has obviously sent some ripples through the marketplace. How many will follow? How's that going to work? We know that Google and Facebook have also said that until the end of 2020, they will allow their workers to work from home. And and I think there's been a lot of positives uh, with the work from home, the remote working. It's not a new concept, but certainly blew up uh, in this time. A little granola in the throat, folks. That happens live every once in a while. There's a little behind the scenes. Blood sugar was low before we started the program. And inevitably, this is why you should not eat before a show. I'm going to teach within a lesson right now. No matter how hungry you are, don't eat a granola bar before you go live. You never know where that little grain is going to work itself up. So one of the things that we're seeing is people are going, okay, we can cut costs. We can see efficiencies that are improving. And so this remote thing, huh, maybe we expand it. But I want to throw the caution flag out there to say, all right, while all those, all those things are true, certainly in the short term, and they might stay true in the long term. The question is this, what are the potential downsides to a large portion, if not all of your workforce working from home. And so that means you, you working from home. What are the downsides? I think you have to be very careful about culture. You know, you have to think about the relationship side of this deal. You know, interacting all the time on Zoom or some other platform, it's not the same type of connection. So culture, those type of things, relationship health is really important. The other thing is, what about collaboration? I'm a huge fan of collaboration, and I will tell you the collaboration much stronger in person. What about IT risk? I think that's an issue. I'm not an IT guy, but I think that's an issue. Uh, I, I will tell you that I think there are some people who will not struggle at all with performance and accountability, but there are others who will. What about the unhealthy leader? who above that leader, the policy has come down, so-and-so can work from home. But they don't trust you because they're not healthy. They've got control issues. Uh Uh-oh, because they're not healthy. How's that going to play out? And then what about just the loneliness factor? The mental and emotional health 
of always working at home, here's what I would tell you. If you're being offered that opportunity, I would pay attention to those red flags that I just threw out, or yellow flags, caution flags, let's say that. But I would also think about your long-term connectivity. If you're going to succeed in a remote situation, I will tell you that I think you're going to have to be disciplined and strategic to make sure that if you're working from home, that you are going into the office on a semi-regular basis or connecting with others outside of the office. There's something about the relationship factor here, and it can't be overlooked. So remote, if that's your game, understand isolation is not the game. Remote, yes, not isolated. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577 is the number to jump in. The lines are filling up. Get those chat questions in now. Let's start it off with Jason in Burlville, Rhode Island. Jason, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, how's it going? Jason, uh, I'm living the dream. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I got a quick question. I, I've been unemployed for 18 months. Uh and there's several circumstances leading up to that I won't get into right now. Uh, and I, I have a couple questions. I have no income coming in, but I do have a bank account. And I have, my question is, is, should I be investing no. right now? Um, <laughs> how big is the bank account? Uh, 70K. No. You have no. no income coming in. You haven't worked in 18 mm-hmm. months. And you're calling me, asking me if you should invest? No, you need to go to work. Oh, yeah. I've been trying. But, you know, without getting into detail, there's a bunch of circumstances that led to this. My company closed. I went for training in 2019 as part of the TAA. Had a couple interviews, and I it was actually looking very good at the beginning of the year for a job. And then COVID hit, and they rescinded the uh, job. No, I, I get it, and I hate that. But, Jason, I'm going to be really straightforward with you. None of that adds up to you being out of work for 18 months. There's something you can do. I'm talking to workers every day that are having to work two and three jobs to replace the income that they had prior to COVID. Are you single? You have uh, another income coming in. Uh, What's your relationship status? I I live with a girlfriend. Okay, so she's uh, helping pay some of the bills, right? Yes, yes. And uh, and, uh, as far as I think I, I... do have you know some things that I've been selling off, so I keep away from the bank account. Uh, I have no I have no bills other than rent and utilities. I mean, my cars are paid off. But you're not even and, paying uh, rent, right? I, I'm paying half the rent out of your savings account. Yes, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Hmm. It's just not good financial. I mean, the, the, I would not, I would not touch more of that seventy thousand if you don't have to. You ought to be out delivering pizzas. You ought to be doing something, Jason. Now, I think you got mm-hmm. a sugar mama situation that's pretty good, but you dwindling that bank account just because you don't want to go do some odd jobs. I don't like it because right now, if you can no, go, no, make, it's not because I don't want to do them. It's because no one will hire me for no, them. I, it's I'm not an true. engineer. It's not true. It, it's not true. You can well, get a job you're delivering not familiar pizza. With this area. No, no, you could deliver pizzas, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Do something. I've, I've applied. All right. Because it, I was told straight out by them because of my background that they know that I'm going to leave them as soon as I find a job. Okay. Jason, we're going to have to agree. Town. Everyone knows uh, each other. I get it, but I'm, I'm going to have to, we're just going to have to agree to disagree. I think oh, okay, there's, sure thing. I, my point is this, there is work that you can do and you should do because I'm trying to help you. I don't want you to touch the nest yep. egg. 70 grand's really nice, man. And you don't have any debt and you got a great girlfriend, but uh, I, I'd get out of the small town. I'd do something. I, I just don't like you settling. You have settled, my friend, and that's about as... That's about as close to negative as I'm ever going to get on this show, but you are, you have settled so much, you don't even know anything but settling. And settling is not good. It's not good financially. It's not good emotionally. And if I could talk to your girlfriend, I'd tell your girlfriend to put the pressure on you. Kick your fanny out of the house. You need to start doing something. Uh, You just do. I know you don't like that. But saying, well, I'm an engineer and I live in a small town, so no one will hire me because I'm overqualified. That is just, 
Oh, I don't like that. All right, let's move on. 844-747-2577. Let's go to Shanice in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Shanice, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. You bet. How can Um, I help? I am an entrepreneur at heart. I've had my photography business now for eight years, but I'm at the point where I'm not 100% sure I should continue. Why? um, Why? Especially with COVID, because it's kind of an accidental business. It's something I started to do, and then people just started requesting. So it more feels like an obligation. And the reason for my call is I've taken a lot of tests, worksheets on passions and gifts. Um, and I've done yours as well, but I'm just not 100% clear. I get stuck at three different things. and um, Great. That's good news. That's go. great news, Shanice. we got something to work with. Tell me the three different things. I get stuck at... Um, Teaching, speaking, and singing. Oh, my goodness. I see a big, giant clue. You love to perform. Think about it. You like being up in front of people and speaking. You get the juice when you think about it. You get the juice when you do it. That's what teaching is, too. It's a little different audience, but it's still a form of performing, of public performance and singing. Do you see that? I can see that. Yeah. Can say that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Shanice, there's some there's some freak shows out there like you and me that we like the pressure. Most of the most of the world's population fears public speaking more than death, but not you and me and all the other nuts out there. We like it. <laughs> right? Well, how do you find income there though? You're kidding me, right? Let's just think of all the things we could do in the marketplace where you are able to communicate in public. Could be small groups in sales. That's what sales is. It's public presentation. Could be to a one-to-one situation. Could be a one-to-ten. Could be to hundreds. You know, depends on the situation. You could be a, a professional instructor. You pick the topic. That's not teaching per se in the educational environment. It's in the corporate environment, instructing. Or you could be a teacher and teach a topic. That means something to you or teach on a skill uh, that means something to you or teach on a public policy issue, whatever it is. I could go on and on and on. So the question mm-hmm. becomes, what are the results that matter most to you? Three questions. And I want you to speak from your heart. Okay. Cause I think you know the answer and you're, you're dealing with some doubt and maybe some fear. And I want that to go away for just a few moments. Who are the people okay. you most want to help? What are the problems that those people have, the challenges, the needs, the wants? And then what are the solutions or the solution to that problem for those people that fires your soul up? Answer that. Right now? Right now. That's why you called. Um, Let it rip. um, Everyone. I mean, I I want to help people. No, you don't want to help everyone. Come on, that's impossible. Who do you really want to help? Who would be the people like if you're if you're performing for an audience? Who's the audience you most want to perform for? I've led you to the water. Take a big drink, Shanice. Go say it. People at church. I don't know. Okay, great. Wait a second. See, so you hear the doubt dripping off of you right now. Yeah. You have an answer, but you can barely get the answer out of your mouth before you start to go. I don't know. You just said it. People at church. <laughs> right? Come on. Am I right, Shanice? Yes. All right. Be more. So tell me more about that. The people at church. Who do you want to speak to? Who do you want to sing to? Um, Say it. Giving people hope and practical tips on serving God. There you go. Um, there you go. There you go. I've also thought of finances only because that's part of my story, particularly. Well, you can do both. Um, Who says you can't do both? Who says you can't be uh, a full-time, you know, uh, staffer at a church or a minister or work for a nonprofit ministry, and then you also do financial coaching on the side, or you just lead Financial Peace University, you know, as a as a ministry, as a as a as a hobby level passion. You don't have to choose either or here. So let's just have fun here. I tried to get you there. I think this is the ultimate question, and I want you to answer this, and then we'll talk about the path to get there. But if I could guarantee you a path to get where you want to go, Shanice, I guarantee Mm -hmm. you that there's a path. 
Because there is. And I give you the gig tomorrow. You don't have to commit the rest of your life to it, but you know you can't fail. What would you do? Just say it. Let the doubt go and say it. Same. That's what I thought. But you wonder, do I have to have a recording contract? Do I have to go on American right. Idol? Do I have to go on The Voice? Will anybody listen to me sing? And you got all this stuff in your head. And it's all about external garbage that's creating doubt. When the reality is, one of the happiest places in your life is when you are singing to a church audience. Am I right? Yes. Making a joyful, finish the sentence. No. There we go. Do I hear some emotion? Yeah. Why? Why are you crying? I'm just trying to make income. And I worry about income more than anything. I get it. Okay. So now let's address that. Are you single? Married? What's your relationship situation? Um, no, married. Um, we're, we've been working on the um, financial freedom steps with Dave Ramsey, and we're, we're at step three and four. Um, that's phenomenal. But that's just always been a part of my story. To I be get it. Free. Yeah, but listen, you're on baby steps three and four. That means you've, you've got your, you're working on your mercy fund. You don't, any, you don't have any debt, right? Just school. Okay, well, you're not on baby step three then. Baby step two is paying the school off. Oh, well, yeah, we're in the midst of, I already down a couple loans for school. We're okay. still on that. You're um, on baby step and, two, trying to get to baby step three. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. But that's in sight. You're going to get there, aren't mm -hmm. you, Shanice? Yeah. And you and your hubs are on the same page. You guys are locked arms and knocking this thing out. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. then. So here's the deal. You do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. You called me today because you're trying to figure out what you want to do. And you know what you want to do. You knew it at the start of the phone call. But you're going, how do I get out of debt? How do I bring in a certain amount of money? And then how do I transition? Right. And the answer right. is, you do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. So when you guys get out of debt and you get that emergency fund there, then you're going to be in a position where you can, you can actually entertain moving over into a position where you're singing for folks. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, yeah. then. Okay, then. Here's the deal. Shanice, can I just pull a page out of my story for you for a moment? Okay. I had a wife and three kids, still do. And I was trying to make it in radio. National radio was the dream. Feels kind of big, doesn't it, Shanice? Right. It was big. I didn't know how I was going to get there. But I had to take care of Stacy and Ty and Chase and Josie first. Yeah, and it was right. intimidating. But I believed I could get there. But you know what I did? I built a side business that turned into my full-time business that allowed me to have a day job that I could run and take care of the family. And it was going to take longer to make it into broadcasting, but I was going to be able to take care of those that mattered most to me. Mm -hmm. And I got there, didn't I? Yeah. Now you can get there too. You keep that passion alive. You sing every chance you can right now. And I don't care if you get paid for it. You just sing and you keep singing. And don't you stop singing. You hear me, Shanice? Yeah. Thank you. I believe in you. Thank you, sweet lady. She's going to get there. Listen, folks, a quick little teaching here because this is really, really important. Some of you right now are in the same place that Shanice is. Let me tell you what it is. She's absolutely clear. She, she presented like a patient who didn't know what was wrong. Oh, she knew. She knew. You know what was clouding her from being able to tell me what she wanted to do? Massive doubt. Massive doubt that says, Shanice, it's too late. Shanice, you're not good enough. Shanice, you got debt. Shanice, you come from this family or whatever is your situation. And when doubt just continues to sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear and tell you that it's probably not possible, you go from hearing the probably not possible to it's not possible. And then you get so confused, you call up on the Ken Coleman Show and you can't even tell me what your heart desires. And I get it. I've been there. Ken, you're delusional, man. You got this crazy, nasty, naked ambition to do national broadcasting, and it has nothing to do with taking care of Stacy and nothing to do with taking care of the kids, and it's such a long haul. You're creating too many sacrifices. It's going to be too difficult. You're too old. You don't have a degree in it. Sound familiar, anybody? I've been there. 
And the doubt will weigh you down like I dropped a pallet of cinder blocks on your chest. And you won't be able to see clearly. And as a result, you won't be able to act confidently. Folks, call the show. I don't care how long it takes you to get in. Let's expose your fear and doubt for what it is. It's a liar. Did you hear the emotion? Did you hear her heart? That was her heart. And she only started to cry when she actually admitted she knew what she wanted to do. And she wants to sing. And only when she allows herself to admit this is what I want to do, but she's ultimately crying. She's going, Ken, I don't know how to do it. I want to do it so bad, but I don't know if I could do it. And it's breaking my heart. The emotion comes out when she realizes this is what I want to do. And I've been denying it. And if I don't chase it, I'm going to be at the end of my journey and my heart will still be aching because it's been aching for decades because the heart was never allowed to do what the heart wanted to do. Please have the courage to get clear and I'm here for you. This is life changing stuff. If you don't believe it, you think you go rewind and you listen to that sweet lady's heart break on the air and then hear it fill up If you don't think this is big time stuff, go watch another YouTube show that'll teach you how to build something. I don't care. Go watch anything you want. Go watch Cats Chase Yarn. But if you are willing to have the courage to do what that lady did, clarity is waiting for you. This is serious business. Serious business. And I'm here for you. 844-747-2577. Oh boy, I'm all fired up, Joe. I may just take an extra hour today. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just so fired up. Uh, let's go to the chat room. Uh, I'll do a quick little lesson. It's a really important lesson I got to give you. Before you launch the business or launch into this career, I got something that you got to do and most people overlook it, but it takes some guts. I'm going to tell you what it is in a few moments. Let's go to the chat room. Rich writes in, do you think companies might consider working from home to be a better option than keeping everyone in the office because it will lessen their cost of maintaining offices? Yeah, I addressed this at the top of the program, Rich. There are a lot of companies that are looking at this going, wait a second. We were spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on flights, hotel room, meals for meetings. And Zoom is working. There's no question. I do not think it will replace the human connection. But yeah, I think companies are going to do that. No question about it. But, you know, as with anything, you, you know, you have this pandemic come in and it changes the circumstances. And so the circumstances change. And what do we do? We adapt. And then so it'll create some things where we go, okay, let's keep doing this. But then as things shift, shift back to normal, then those new practices will also be kind of, huh, we got to look at those and go, does this make sense in the long term? By the way, quick commercial. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about new normal. Makes me want to spit nails, Joe. Don't ever say around me we're in a new normal. No, we're not. I'm tired of that. No, it, it's, it's just, it's so irrelevant. It's ridiculous. You would tell you what I'm seeing in Tennessee, folks, people getting back to normal. Oh, and it's good. By the way, my favorite two words, Joe, that I'm seeing everywhere, we're open. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. All right, uh, let's go to Kenneth. Ken, I'm in the wrong role, in the wrong place. I'm getting a promotion and a pay increase, though. <laughs> pay increase. <laughs> Should I take the promotion and continue to apply to other jobs I'm interested in? No, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like you taking a promotion while you're looking for other things. It's just, it doesn't feel right. Now, you know, I'd make a decision pretty quick um, because they're going to start to go, uh, we gave you a promotion. What are you doing here? Um, but you admitted you're in the wrong role, wrong place. That is get out of Dodge. And so if it were me, I'd say, you know what? 
I don't think this promotion is right for me. I know this is crazy. I just don't. If they're going to put pressure on you, you don't have something to go to. I do not like you taking a promotion and then skating out of town. I don't like that at all. It doesn't feel right. It feels gross, you know? So, no, I wouldn't personally do that. Uh, but, you know, you do what you do. 844-747-2577 is the number. Okay, we're going to get back to the phones. Real quick lesson here. Let's stay here on this camera. I like this. I'm going to teach right to you people right here. All right. So we get calls all the time. Ken, I want to start a side hustle, side hustle this, a dream job. I want to be an entrepreneur. And I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. But there is this condition in the human spirit that's a wonderful thing if kept in check. And that is we desire for progress, right? We just crave progress. So I want to start the deal tomorrow. And Ken, I think it's going to do this much revenue in the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And it's going to be great. And I'm going to quit my job. And it's going to be wonderful. And there's going to be rainbows and unicorns and beautiful little birds uh, all the time. It's just going to be awesome. Well, number one, no, it isn't. It's just not. So... I really, really, really want you to get this. What's the thing you need to really focus on before the launch? Because I'm all about starting and launching. But I want you to start and launch the right way. And here's the simple little word. And boy, I'm running into this with my boys right now. They're playing sports. They want to play the games. You know what they don't want to do? Practice. They don't want to practice. Oh, I got practice tomorrow. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hard. Yeah, yeah, it's really true. Great business analogy, by the way. If you're an entrepreneur practicing the craft, testing the model, that's what I mean by practice, okay? Let's expand practice for a moment, and really we're saying test the idea, test the product, come back and look at the results, fix it, test it again, practice some more. You want to go into radio? Don't try to get on daily. Show up at Saturday at 2 o'clock where I showed up and practice. You want to be a public speaker? Don't try to get a big gig. You're not going to get it anyway. Start showing up in front of 20 people or better than yet, 10 people. And practice. And practice and practice and practice. See, that's what separates the good from the great is being willing to embrace practicing and testing and get it ready. Now, that does not mean that you don't ever launch. But what I'm saying is so many people just hit the idea and they want to launch and they forget the practice part. And so you, your pain is greater when you don't practice. If you're not prepared, you haven't run through the plays, guess what? It's going to be a lot tougher to execute when we line up against the opponent. Practice. It's what champions do that everybody else doesn't do. They get in and they shoot the shots early before practice and they stay another 90 minutes and they practice. Is practice fun? Rarely. But practice is what greatness is built on. So please, test, test, test. Practice, practice, practice. And it's going to put more time on your timeline. It's going to cause more pain. Hear me say this. This is not some rosy picture I'm painting. It's going to take longer. It's going to be harder. But it is going to be so much more successful if you put in the time. All right. There's my lesson. 844-747-2577. 2577 Two things I got to mention. Uh, unbelievable stuff that the team is helping me crank out, and I'm proud of the team. Stuff that's helping you. Uh, obviously, our best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, we have an incredible deal for the month of May. I don't know if it's going to last longer than May, but you can get all three formats of the book, super low price, kencoleman.com, $10 for the hard copy. The ebook is 8 The audio book is $3.99, kencoleman.com. And then while you're there, uh, for those of you, grandparents, parents, you got a youngster age 13 to 19, and you want to help them begin to have these conversations about what they were created to do, where they can do it, and how they can get there. We created the Foundations in Career Readiness. This is a home study. They can do it by themselves. Don't need you, mom or dad, or grandma and grandpa. Don't need you. 
uh, and it's it's designed for them. Bite sized, super practical teaching. It's only twenty nine ninety nine. It's eventually going to go up to eighty nine ninety nine, but it's twenty nine ninety nine right now. Ken Coleman dot com slash store. Ken Coleman dot com slash store. All right, uh, Glastonbury, Connecticut, is where Andrew is. Andrew, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Hey, Andrew. Uh, so I'm I'm looking for some help uh, figuring out what uh, what kind of job I should be looking for. Uh, I couldn't find work for a long time, so I sort of took what I could get. Uh, it's not a bad job. But Good. Uh, this is where I, all along I had planned to try and figure out the next steps of my career at this point in time. And yeah. now the, uh, I was furloughed to have the time to uh, think about it. Luckily, Good. I. What are you thinking about? Do you have a. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, when I job searched before, my biggest issue was that I couldn't answer the question, what kind of job are you looking for? I had people in positions who could have helped, and I just was simply unable to. Okay, I get give it. An answer why do you think? Question. Why do you think that you can't give an answer to that? Have you never wondered about a type of job or a type of career? You've never allowed your mind to truly fantasize about a great future in the workplace. You've so, never done that. Answer that: yes or no. So, well, yes. Okay, then I want to know what you've wondered about. So long term, I want to. Start and run my own business. What kind of business? Uh, I, I have a couple ideas. Tell me what one they are. To, uh, one, the one I'm actually sort of sketching out the ideas for is a media company producing modern audio dramas like the old radio theater shows, except through modern means. All right, what else? And then the other was a food truck business. Okay. All right. So you told me that you don't know what kind of job you should be looking for because you're, you got your mind all out of whack. We, we don't want to yeah. think about a job until we think about our future. Because once we get clear on our future, then we start going, okay, what do I need to do in the short term that sets me up for the long term? So this media company seems to me that it, before you start producing these kind of throwback audio shows which you would have to test that and that that's something you need to build up to it seems like you could start that eventually and just start doing video yes, and, and audio for companies on that oh, okay you're working on starting an audio video production well, company well well i'm starting on coming up with the story ideas researching it yeah but before uh, you do that my point is this before you do that we've got to get you some stability and i wonder if yeah. i wonder if you know, one option is to eventually get yourself to a situation where you work for yourself and you have your own production company and other people are paying you for your services. Do you understand what I'm saying? While you're developing yeah. these stories and trying to sell these stories, because I'm going to be honest with you, if it's just, I want to start a, a, a production company to do these old timey, you know, new version of the old timey radio sitcoms, I can tell you that's pretty risky, man. And, and betting the farm on that's risky and there's no reason to be that risky as opposed to do you love the audio and video production work as well to where you could do that and get paid well work for yourself and other people pay you for that and that allows you the freedom to be able to pursue this idea that is uh, i'll be honest with you it's uh, let's put it up there as a long shot do you understand where i'm going with this yes Okay. So like for instance the food truck is if i had to make you choose between two ideas this let's call it media company and a food truck. You can only pick one. You knew you wouldn't fail. Which one would you pick? The media. That's what I thought. So here's the deal. Yeah. We don't want to mess around with a food truck either. Cause that's an investment. Um, and so you're furloughed right now. What do you think the chances are that you're going to get back in that position? I have a tentative date. Um, I think about June 20th, that's okay. when the next phase for Connecticut starts. Great. Can you survive financially until then? Yes. Great. Uh, that, what do you make? What were I you making prior home, to that? 15 50 an hour. 
uh, full time. I worked in office services uh, in a, in the mailroom at an insurance company. Okay, so here's my point. I, I think for you, it's getting stable, and so it's yeah. so it's you know it, between now and then, if you want to go get another job that's paying you fifteen or sixteen an hour, great, do it. You're not beholden to the mailroom. That's not your dream job anyway. And and yeah. and so I don't think this is about what you asked me. I don't think this is about, Ken, I need to find a job that I like. No, you just need a job that that gives you stability and gives you a ladder where maybe you can get that hourly rate up or move into a, a better salaried position doing the kind of work you do now because it's your day job and it's the day job that will fund the dream job. Make sense? Yes. Well, that's what I want you focusing on. It's not about coming up with the right, well, I want to do this job, this job. No, what do you do well right now? You know what you do well. You know what your talents are. So that will allow you to select different day jobs where you could come in and they pay you and they know Andrew's going to do a good job because your dream job is what we're looking at. And that's you developing your own stories and selling those stories. So again, it's, you know, there's a lot of parallel to what I did in radio. I wasn't going to make any money. And Joe, I didn't make any money for two years. Not a not a dime on the radio show that the Ken Coleman show the first version didn't make a dime. Well, it didn't matter because I had my own company and I was selling sponsorships. And so the same thing for Andrew here, Andrew. That's what you're doing. You just get a day job that's bringing in the the most amount of money you can within your situation, and and you're living your life below your means, and that's what's keeping you stable as you create these stories and you've already started. So bravo, but don't overthink this it's not like you got two dream jobs. You got one to so go after. You're a young man. Get after it. You can always pivot if it, if you find out later that you were eating too much bad pizza and that you were delusional. You know, I don't think you are, but you know, look, go for it. You're going in the general direction. By the way, it's a neat idea. Neat idea. Many Americans that are 30 and 35 and younger probably don't even realize that that's where the sitcom comes from was Americans gathered around this giant piece of furniture, probably three to four feet high in some situations, two feet wide, and it was a radio, and they would listen to sitcoms, if you will. So voice actors, uh, it's, it's, it's a very fascinating idea. And with the growth of podcasts, it's an intriguing idea. It really is. Uh, because a lot of these these podcasts like serial and stuff where you, you know, these reporters have gone in with mics and stuff and you can hear these real life conversations. It's not that it, it's really an interesting concept. Will it develop? I don't know, but this young man has got to take care of himself in the short term and stability so that he can chase that. Cause it's a long term play. So that's how it works. So at that point, again, I'm okay with you just going, what do I do best? That's my talent. And, and that's all that really matters. Do I have to love the work? It'd be kind of nice if you liked it, but you don't have to love it because your mind is focused on the future. Man, I want to keep going. Stay tuned. We're working on that. My time's almost up, but before I let you go, you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Press on.